All right, ladies and gentlemen, got your watch list coming in October 25th, 2019, and Amazon had one of its worst quarters ever. That may be a stretch, but a lot of people are already asking, is this going to bring down the stock market? Is this hinting at the slow fourth quarter and everything else? So we need to talk about that. We're going to talk about what happened with the play. Unfortunately, our dreams got crushed, or at least my dreams. I didn't get to walk away with the $30,000 we were shooting for. We had that cool play on the parlay, but if you did watch on stream, you got to see what we did with it. We're still going to walk away a winner, surprisingly, and I'm going to go over every single play. So you guys can see exactly what we did and you could kind of understand the logic better but if you were there live on stream you saw everything from the beginning it was kind of working like clockwork with with making the plays as everything was moving up the exact play we put yesterday that thing was up 50 percent at close and even then i even said you know we wanted to hedge it with the protection but there's a really big lesson out of this that i think everybody could learn and take away from especially with how these earnings have been playing out if you've been paying attention there's a lot there so we got a few things we're going to go over i'm going to talk about that and talk Talk about even some potential plays that could lead from here and even how we're going to roll over some of the other plays we have. But tomorrow's going to be really exciting. It's a Froggy Friday, baby. If you don't know what the frog is, make sure you look that up. You can search the trading fraternity frog. But shout out all the OGs and to the new people. We have a bunch of new people and they've been asking questions. And again, if this is your first time watching me, there may be concepts or even as we're discussing Amazon, the relation to the stock market, a lot of these are continued thoughts. So feel free to ask questions if you don't understand it or or some things may you're not I could only give you so much of the full picture here in this 20 or so minutes that we got but the best part is this was even from the stream we are live Monday through Friday 30 minutes before open so if you want to come watch us live just come it's the first link in the description so if you come to any one of our videos you'll see it right there it'll say youtube.com slash the stock market or we have the channel pinned right there just click it stock market live make sure you got the bell with notifications but if you just come here anytime during the day you'll see seven hour streams every single day we even had a weekend stream but hopefully we see you guys there in the morning and hopefully we could welcome you and, and get all your questions answered so but let's get right into it let's talk about what we need to be looking for tomorrow it's pretty simple the key is continuations and push it to the wall even some of the plays that we're in that we're going to need to roll over those are highlighting some very unique opportunities and even with the earnings and everything we saw today there is going to be opportunity now there's two different plays i even have a play i won't even look at with beyond meat there's some that are going to be strictly for tomorrow but if anything as as we as we're following up with earnings, there's still going to be plays that you should push till next week, but push it to the wall. We had a great 11 at 11 today talking about the value of contracts. This is important right here, right now, but there's been so many big earnings. How we follow up with those, those are going to be really big opportunities tomorrow. Next, start planning for more earnings with budgets, with everything. See the reaction and see kind of where the market's going. It's surprisingly holding this 300 and that's putting us now at an interesting space, but that leads to the last key. Watch for any breakdowns in negative trade news. We actually had Pence come on today, the vice president, and it was, uh, we talked about it. On, we, we played it on stream and we talked about it, but the key was it was a inaugural speech to a nonpartisan globalist, you know, welcoming global talks but it was very scathing and coming at china so people said that broke it down but we even got some news after hours or even kind of middle of the market but essentially even the global times chinese editor he said it wasn't that bad and they they really focused on the positive things in the unity so it didn't look like that really affected trade talks but watch out for that watch the yuan but overall too watch this push and pull you had intel now had a great earnings as you as we could clearly see here amazon is the first of the bigger market cap companies to drop you know the key is Apple's still holding up and now too watch out for Apple tomorrow they might even run up off of that we'll see if there's a rotation that outweighs the negative sympathies people could attach to it but then Intel went up a lot and then they kind of leveled out there after the call but there's going to be a nice push pull we have to see how that plays out as well as anything else but watch for any developments with trade or anything to break down from here because that brings up the next thing we talked about we brought this up yesterday this is a big continued idea we've constantly talked about I think this is going to come up I think we need to get more of the earnings out the way but I I said it today it's the fed repo so they're injecting like 156 billion dollars a day now and i said this is something to watch out for if you're not familiar with the repos you could easily look it up and if you have questions we'll answer them i've talked about it here and there we could explain a little bit more but if anything this is really big and there's a lot of other data even with china and looking at currencies and stuff it's getting some worrisome to a degree but we have to see how the market handles this earnings thing but that's pretty much it tomorrow's gonna be a lot like today 
it's going to be very play centric depending on what's moving and how it is because as you see that we haven't really got too much news for the last week and a half during this big earnings season the market is tunnel vision focusing on earnings and it's creating plays and that's why the market the really the overall broader markets are staying at the same level so keep that in mind and hopefully you don't go get too overboard but let's talk about today let's talk about the plays we made so here was amazon if you guys watched that video you saw yesterday we had a very ambitious goal I put down plays and these were the plays we made. And this is what I really want to highlight because these were the plays that I, I talked about yesterday. If these hit, they would have made me roughly around like 25,000 or $30,000 in profits. It was ambitious, but my total investment was $2,000. Now they were on calls. I was expecting upside, you know, hence I bought more calls. I thought there would have been literally, I thought there would have been more potential on the upside. And that's why I did weight it towards the calls. And I did think that a lot of the press and everything coming towards Amazon, it was low, or I, I really think it was negative. So I thought it would have been easier for them to, to beat that, but they didn't. The earnings wasn't that great. Uh, even guidance wasn't too bad. And this is where it's leading to people to ask, you know, is this going to have a negative effect here on the stock market? But all in all though, even though I was wrong, we still came out a winner. Now, we'll see where it opens up tomorrow at 660. I'm winning exactly. And this is what I said. If you were watching the live stream yesterday or today, I explained it. I even explained it there yesterday. The key was I was right, but wrong on the direction, but then still right enough to save me in the sense that the stock moved $102 at 1660. The earnings was pricing in about 37, $47. I believe that was wrong. And we went after plays that were just about one standard deviation in the money. You could see on stream, we talked about this a lot. And that was the idea i was looking at the pricing and i was saying well i i disagree and even people were asking me you know they saw me buying these thousand dollars of, of options and calls they're like yo josh we, this, you don't do this they're like wait hold up do you think it's gonna go down people even said oh i think it's gonna go down and i said it doesn't matter i'm not here trying to get lucky with it it doesn't matter even what i think i understand that with the market that's why i played it how i played it and it was simply covering both aspects but you know this is where we've talked about leveraging, making sure you're getting the most amount of money. All I knew or all I was going to make my basis on, my thesis was the stock is pricing in $40. I disagree with that move. You could see how the options were pricing it, how it was moving. I was expecting a $100 move from the stock. I thought that was appropriate. As you see, that's 5%, 5.8%. And the fact that 5% was still within one standard deviation. It statistically was something that could have happened. And really the prices and volatility was so low. Everyone was expecting a smaller move. Hence the prices. I just disagreed with that. And that's where I set my ranges. So I believe this stock could move about a hundred, hundred thirty dollars at best. And it did even hit that at one point. And that's where, you know, on the upside, think about it. If it did just like it hit 1623 if it did that on the upside we would have smashed every single call because that, that that would have been that 130 thirty dollar move but that was my logic coming into this it's going to move a hundred dollars the options are pricing in lower that's why we did more buys than than selling premium and that is how i positioned myself at the exact strike prices that i did so here are the plays that we did we did that one right off the morning i told you guys and this is what we said it could look like chipotle because right in the morning i was saying well it's going to bounce around for a little bit and then if it starts running up it could start to make a nice pre-earnings moving those could be good and we bought those i bought 10 of these at 72 by close they were trading at like 90 or, or even a dollar a piece so we were up a lot on those but bought 10 of them for 72 dollars, so that's 720 bucks then i did this during the day i sold a credit spread on the puts so i sold a deep in the money put assuming the stock was going to shoot up past 1850 so this was my closest strike price for the most part i wanted to see if i could get more than 220 or two dollars on it but I, I couldn't i was hoping like i could get like 230 on it but this one was a 50 dollar risk so it was risking 50 to make 200 and why i like that play because it would have allowed me now if i was right on my hundred dollar move i would have won on these and think about these ones these were 1890 1897 so again i was even talking about a pre-run up if we go back to those the stock was at 1760 but if you think about it from 1780 this was about 103 dollars up literally what it's down right now that would have got us in the money on those other ones so then i got these since the i couldn't sell credit spreads at this point our max risk is about 720 plus 50 bucks 770 and then i sold five of these for 58 cents or excuse me i bought five of these for 58 cents so 58 times five left us with 290 plus 
770. We're in at 1060 bucks. And then I waited there up until the end of close. And now this is a, another good thing to watch here because a lot of people have even said they get confused. They, they want a clear strategy, this and that. If you've been watching and paying attention, you've noticed I've done the same exact thing every single time with earnings. Depending, you know, if we are able to catch this move like we did on Amazon and foresee it, I'm going to get some a little bit off the morning scale in again just like chipotle that's what i did on chipotle exactly i i scaled in with some premium limited my risk to see what i would get filled at and then it made its move and then coming towards close is when we make the final plays this again all has to do with the timing and the prices so then 30 minutes left before close i wanted one more call i figured again i was like all right well I'm feeling kind of bullish on it. I said I, I got the first thousand. I wanted to put two thousand. This one would have gave me more of my upside there. And I wanted to get closer to the money. I was looking to try to get other spreads, but the risk reward, I would have risked eight hundred dollars or a thousand bucks of max risk to make like four thousand dollars. I was like, well, if I think it's gonna move even higher, I was like, I might as well just get a naked call. I bought this for a ten ninety five. So plus ten ninety five. We're in at 2,155. And again, you could see the strike price there. That's how much we've spent on all of the long plays. I went $2,000 long, and now this has to go to potential reward. I would have made at least $20,000 on these. So if it did what, if it did the same move that it did, but went up instead of down, we would have walked away with $20,000. This is what I'm talking about, leveraging your money appropriately. And even though these plays were far out, it would have been more difficult to hit. But now here's the key. I spent 2000 to make 20 grand, uh, even more than 20 grand. But anybody, you know, this play, this 1095 one, this is going to be, this is going to suffer the same fate as these 1925s. They're both going to be, they're, they're all going to be in the gutter. So unfortunately, if you have any of these calls, they're, they're pretty much going to be dead tomorrow because now they are $200 out of the money instead of $100. So we're in at 2155. And then lastly, I bought the puts to protect it. And now this was the key to the play. This is what saved my ass. And this is what I've been talking about with risk reward and setting yourself up for the opportunity. This is what made this play a work of art, honestly, but this was only possible through what the option chain was telling us. The prices on Amazon were cheap across the board. How did we know it was cheap? Refer to section one. The market was only pricing in a $40 move. It was easy to, you know, I disagreed with that. That's why they were cheap and we were correct in this instance. And why did I say it was cheap and why was it pricing? Because both of these plays, anything of these plays were all within one standard deviation. These, So essentially, these plays had roughly about a 20 or 30% odds of success. But notice how cheap we got them. These should have been a lot more expensive or to spend this little amount of money, we should have been two or three standard deviations outside of the money. So this was the key now, you know, think about this. I've leveraged 2000 to make 20,000, but now that was all calls. I could only win if I make money on the call. So what did we do here? We bought the put and we took advantage of the pricing and I used my same theory. Stock was trading at 1780. I said, well, it could drop 100, $110. The key was now getting me a price so I'm not spending too much, but getting me exposure. So I bought a debit spread for next week again they're all the same dates next week it's a 1670 put and i sold the 1660 so the max gain per contract is ten dollars per share a thousand bucks per contract and that cost me 375 so total add another 375 on here and at 2530 dollars but now this play protected me if it did exactly what i was expecting where i said the market maker was wrong I think it's going to move $100 either way, even though I'm betting more on the upside. It moved my $100. I was still able to take this measly $300, you know, almost seven times as less amount as what we've invested on the calls. And what did it do for me? It was able to give me a, a, enough return to cover this because now the difference between these contracts is going to be 1000 each times three. I'll make $3,000. So... 2530 minus 3000 leaves us with $470 net profit. That's after covering all these costs. So we'll see how this is, but there's a few things to note about all of this play in general. We're actually, I guess, three main things. One, you can see at the beginning, I did the Tesla. We sold this play out. We got over $1,200 for this. I got $1,290 or $1,300 for this. And that's the only motivation I had to play so big. So I took this $1,300. I came out a little bit extra out of pocket because remember, I was expecting my $2,000. But why did I not get $2,000 even though Tesla made the move? 
these bigger companies and bigger spreads with time unfortunately the spreads are wide and you might not get filled i was trying to get filled at like 480 440 somebody in the chat said they got filled that high but as the stock was moving in the morning it was very difficult to get filled i didn't want to risk it so i was like all right I'll just take it out, get me out of here so I could actually start parlaying it. I was like, a thousand percent is good enough for me. And that's the reason why we did it. That's the first thing. So the second thing now, even though we could make 470, that's assuming best case scenario. So we'll see how these values change because if we somehow have any left profit, like let's say this contract magically is worth $100 tomorrow still, that could add it up, but we might not be able to capture the full $3,000 on this tomorrow. So we will see how that happens and how that plays out. So that's the second thing. But now the third thing, how can we do this play better? So again, if you did this, if you followed along, what happened? Some people, if you didn't get the puts, you lost on the calls. That's unfortunate. I lost on my calls, but this is what is still going to allow me to walk away a winner, which is great. But now in retrospect, hindsight's 2020. It's not going to help us here, but guess what? It's going to help us for the next earnings. And this is what I have in mind because I'm an idiot. If I could find a play just like I did with Amazon and I could run my numbers just like I did here today and I could come up with the same assumption that the market maker's wrong and I was pretty confident with it, you know, I made it, I made it in a video, put my money where my mouth is. I did the play. I was right. All boxes checked. It wasn't as if this wasn't a, like this was a hunch and I, a theory and I talked about it. It was just like the TLT. The market was showing something wrong. The pricing was not there. I did. I just, I firmly disagreed with it. But now looking at that, I underestimated the downside, but the key was it had nothing to do with even with what I played or, or it does in the sense that. The problem was I wanted it to do what I wanted. I, I, I weighted it to the top end. So if you only bought the calls, you have to ask yourself why. I still protected myself, but I didn't protect myself as much. But now look at, do the math. This same play, $375 leads to 3,000 bucks. So if I did 375 times seven, 2625, that's the same amount of money I put in on the calls and guess what? That would have been $3,000 a contract or $3,000 pretty much times seven. I would have made 21,000 because I add that now to the 2,500 spent. That would have been $5,000 in. And if I played both sides, I could have came out with 21,000. It would have been a 16 grand net profit. And then I could have truly profited as big as I wanted to. But the problem was now, why did I not do that? This comes up into the risk. So this is looking into next time. I'll have to try to figure it out because we could still lose on this play tomorrow. This is not guaranteed. So now that you see how we could have made money and lost money and we, or that's what's going to happen tomorrow, how do I lose money? Well, very simple. Anywhere past between 670 and below 1850, we lose money. That was the issue. So I bet on it moving outside this certain range. If it fell in that range, we lost. So we were right. So hopefully you're understanding the motivations for the play, how it worked and all that. But that was the end result. And we'll see. And then on top of that, I did get, we did play another play today, Once Therapeutics. I want to talk about that briefly. We saw it pop up. It was positive news about their deal and merger, but I was an idiot. I was like, the options were too cheap. My computer at the time was going crazy. I, I didn't think twice about it. And I went, I bought these cheap ones for 20 bucks. But the problem is they had a buyout already. It's not going to go past 115. It might. And that's kind of what the stock was moving like, that maybe it could do that. So we'll see. But other than that, it won't. And then the next play was ILMN. Illumina. And now this one looked great there. And, and Illumina is a big mover. So this could change by the morning. Again, same thing with any of these stocks. We'll see. But I played this for earnings. I was expecting them to surprise on the upside. And that play was about $200 to, to net 2000 but we're probably going to lose on that one, which is going to be interesting. Should have probably just put that on Amazon puts, but we'll see. And then lastly, you know, we cashed out that Tesla, but then also today for earnings, there was Intel. They skyrocketed. They were up 9%. They came down, but this is going to be interesting. And this led me to bring up NVIDIA. And I brought this up. I was going to play them, but with NVIDIA being high up here, this could be one of those plays that is either going to be good tomorrow, next week, or you ask yourself, do you bypass November 15th and try to get one of the earnings plays? So watch them, but then coming into everything else, watch Facebook and Google now. They have their earnings. Google dropped after the Amazon report, which is interesting, and Google's been up, but watch Facebook as well. It's time we set up on these, and then we, again, let's start doing our price analysis and try to get to the bottom of this. But watch those. Uh, watch Once Therapeutics, then watch Netflix. And now these are some of the plays we have to decide to roll over. Oh, so rest in peace, Robin Hood. I forgot. Damn, this thing's going to get killed too. Dude, this thing's going to die tomorrow. We're going to lose 165 from the Amazon. 
And then the Netflix, we never took profit on there. So Netflix, we could still win. We need a Hail Mary. Pretty much this thing needs to go to 280. If it doesn't close at 280 tomorrow, 280 tomorrow, we will make a thousand bucks. If it go, if, if Netflix could magically pop up nine dollars tomorrow we are we will be laughing to the bank if not we are going to be losing the robin hood has been rip'd almost well good thing we haven't deposited in it but we will see and now how do you handle this position this is an iron condor so there's good things and bad things about this it's the value of it but if you notice the calls are worthless but why are these worth so much that is going to be the key the 280 put and the 277 and a half put they're right there this is going to free up collateral we might have just enough left in this account to play it and i think i might do just that i might roll it over but how i'm going to do that it's given the iron condor these are going to be worthless we let these expire we could try to close out the put side and that's going to be the key to all of it all we have to do is roll over the puts now because these are already expired, so I don't need to box myself in. Maybe I could get more money if I do that, or we could even adjust it to the lower end. But if anything, I'm probably going to just reopen these trades as a put spread. And now these are holding still such high values, we'll be able to at least get a lot of credit for them. And that could be the last saving grace for this account here because these Amazons are going to die. And then those Bank of America is everything, really. So RIP, we had the earnings, we were doing good. We have to see. We got greedy with it. We were just at the 1100. And hopefully you can see how fast that changes if you guys don't take your profits, especially when it's there on the weekly. So we have our contingency plan of rolling over. We'll watch what happens with that. And so watch Netflix. I'm going to keep my eye out for that. And that could even be a big play tomorrow too, depending on if it does get that steam. Watch Tesla to see how that moves. But now also the Boeing. This one was a little bit more positive. Remember, we have that other iron condor expiring. The good thing about this one, if Boeing moves $3 tomorrow, we break even. If it moves $5 tomorrow up, we'll make $2,000 off of it. So we're going to watch that. How this plays out in the morning is going to be good. If Boeing does make a surprise, I will keep my eyes out for it to see what happens. But there's that play, but the same logic on that Boeing as well too as the Netflix. If we want to roll it over, we don't even need to roll over the calls. All we have to do is just sell the puts because the puts are the reason why the Condor even has any value right now to begin with because the puts are in the money, the calls are out the money, they're gonna expire tomorrow. But watch out for Boeing, and then same thing with the CMG. We have these till next week. Those actually went up like 300 bucks on us. We're still like 10 bucks out the money, but at 809, they went up. I think they're only up like uh, 30 bucks right now, but at one point they were up like two, $300. So that one still has a little steam in it, but overall, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. It could be a make or break for a lot. And then we still have to watch how the Amazons play out. And then lastly, watch Microsoft. I like where they're at. I think they're an interesting point here. And if things do get bullish, or if somehow people want to start rotating, they might pick Microsoft as one of those candidates. So watch how it moves tomorrow. Like we said, watch Netflix and then beyond. This was the play I wanted to watch for. This is what I was saying yesterday. I don't think it's going to move till next week. That's the lockout, but sometimes it might bounce up here and you're going to start seeing a lot of these options come up here for cheap. So you could see how some of these are and usually the debit spreads are really, really cheap. So they're, they're usually a little sprung out here, but like if you could get the 93s, these are like a nine set difference. It gets a little bit wider here with the ass, but if you keep an eye out for it, it could be pretty interesting. Interesting. But if anything, just watch. These are going to depreciate hard tomorrow, and I think that's going to be interesting to keep an eye out for. Watch Roku. They had a pretty big day today, so hopefully we'll see how it carries up with even Disney went down today. But again, Roku's been all over the place. I still have those puts coming in for next week. And then Shopify, they dropped off the Amazon news, and it kind of makes sense with demand and Christmas demand and all that. So we'll see what happens. But if that starts to make big moves, if that starts to make big moves, though, uh, it could be one to jump on, but see kind of, we have to even see the Amazon reaction and how that unfolds for earnings, but that is pretty much it, baby. So make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure we see you in the morning. Stay hydrated, healthy, ready to go. Hopefully your head's in the game, regardless of anything that's happened, whether you make money, lose money, hopefully you're learning something. You guys are watching this coming to work. You know, if anything, you guys are going to learn about earnings. Some of you are attracted to it. Some of you are going to be scared of this from now on. Some of you got greedy. I got greedy. Some people didn't get greedy. They took it early. You're seeing what it's like. This is part of the game. These are the experiences that are honestly priceless. Even watching Amazon today, watching how all of this unfolded and how you could see the pricing. If you could learn this lesson and start to apply it and control your budgets, you guys are, are starting to learn, are learning how to navigate these waters. So baby, let's get it and let's go. <laughs>